For the past few months, I've been playing Poké Wilds. What is Poké Wilds? This is Poké Wilds. An open world survival Pokemon game with a procedurally generated sandbox map full of different biomes, Pokemon, and structures to explore. With the graphics and soundtrack being based on generations 1 and 2, it truly feels like an updated Game Boy Color game. There are lots of features to check out in this game, including crafting, legendary events, and shiny hunting. Here are my 350 days in Poké Wilds. Let's do this. Loading into the game for the first time, I was prompted with the setup of my world and my character. I decided to do an XXL world, so I had as much space as possible to explore and build. For my character choice, there was a bunch of character sprites from various Pokemon games, and I chose to play as Mint, a character from the Game Boy Color Pokemon TCG2 game. I called myself Proper and made a light blue, like my favourite colour, and waited as my world was created. I respawned onto a beach biome. I familiarised myself with the controls and started to explore. The first Pokemon I came across was a friendly Yanma, which wanted to join my team from the get-go. Upon checking my team, I noticed that I had a Machop as my starter Pokemon. The Pokemon in this game have field moves, which work similar to HMs, and they can help out in the open world. Machop's field move is build meaning straight away I had a way to build any survival gear that I might possibly need. Every Pokemon also has the ability to follow you, a feature that I love from the later Pokemon games. Seeing the Gen 2 inspired sprites following you around in the overworld is amazing. I came across a Paris in my first battle, I explored some of the grass and had my Yanma fainted, so I put Machop up top for now. After leaving the beach I immediately found a desert biome, and as I did, night time began to fall. The music for night in this game is super intense, so I think that means danger is around. I spent a bit more time walking through the desert and found a giant building, but before I could check it out, a group of angry Cacturns spawned in and started chasing me around. The Cacturn Squad. After escaping the Cacturn Squad, a ghost appeared and started to chase me, but luckily, daytime came and it faded away. I checked the front door of the giant building. It was locked, so I moved on. Exploring a bit more, I came across some green coloured eggs. There were some Venusaurs nearby, so I assumed that this must be a Bulbasaur egg. I wanted to start a Pokemon, so without thinking, I took the egg. Suddenly, the Venusaur parents started to chase me down. I mean, I did just steal the child, so it's fair enough. I ran for my life with Machop, and they chased us right into a graveyard. I managed to get away from them. I checked a couple of trees to collect some berries. Wait a minute, that's not a berry tree. A Soda Wudo has attacked me. I'm telling you, this game was bullying me for my first two days. I ran away and headed for the beach and found a Pokeball. Then, just above me, I saw my favourite starter Pokemon of all time. It was a Squirtle. It joined my team and I got it to follow me. Heading down the beach to find another one of my favourite Pokemon, Ponyta. Luckily, this one was also friendly and joined me. I checked out its ability and it turns out you can ride certain Pokemon in this game. So now I had a fast travelling Pokemon buddy. After a bit of training and capturing a Pidgey, the egg from before started to hatch. And I was right, it was a Bulbasaur. I now had two starter Pokemon on my team. Bulbasaur had two field moves, Repel, and Cut. Repel is used to keep away low-leveled Pokemon. With Cut, I was able to cut down trees and grass. As I cut down the trees, I noticed that I started to collect items such as logs and apricorns. After collecting a bunch more, I brought Machop out to see what I can build. There was torches, storage, house materials, and so much more. I built a campfire and interacted with it. Campfires are used to craft many items, including a bunch of different kinds of Pokeballs. All I had to do was find the ingredients for each recipe, and I would be able to make the item. I crafted as many different Pokeballs as I could, and each one has its on perk. Heavy balls, for example, can help capture heavier Pokemon. Love balls help capture Pokemon of the opposite gender of your current Pokemon. And there were so many more. I used the rest of the night to gather more materials. Day 4, I made a bunch more Pokeballs from the materials I gathered, so that I was prepared for any new Pokemon that I wanted for my team, or in case a shiny Pokemon came up. I spent the rest of the day training up my Pokemon and learning information from the guide in my inventory. Day 5, I slept in my sleeping bag, a key item in my backpack that puts up my Pokemon health by 2 HP a second, and can be used as many times as I need it. I did some more Pokemon training and started to learn how to build with Machop by building myself some defense. Get it? <laughs> I hate myself. <laughs> I started off day 6 by finding some squirtle eggs. I really wanted my first shiny Pokemon, so of course, like the little spyro egg thief I am, I stole the egg. I ran into the grass to train, and to also get my steps in to hatch the eggs. As nighttime hit, the egg hatched into a squirtle. Not shiny, but now I had a squirtle that I could use to breed my own eggs. I went back for the rest of the squirtle eggs. I needed to hatch a female so that I was able to start breeding for a shiny. The squirtle parent ended up catching up to me and almost wiped my entire team, but I managed to defeat it. After leaving the battle, I ran into the grass, and this happened. Oh, oh my god, a shiny combi, what? No, dude, <laughs> it's a female, there's no way, what? Oh my god, all the others have been finding the males. Okay, um, oh my god, I've got one Pokeball. Let's just hope we can capture it in something. Fastball, yes. Okay, that should be fine. Go. No way, dude, let's go. Yes, 
Oh my god, I can get a shiny Vesper coin in this game? Are you freaking kidding me? So, I ended up finding one of the rarest shiny Pokemon as my first shiny in Pokewilds. A female shiny combi. For those who don't know, the only way to evolve a combi is by having a female one so that it can become a Vespiquen. So, the odds of finding this as my first shiny Pokemon was insane. Any Pokemon caught in the game gets sent back to the last safe place, which is the last place that I slept in my sleeping bag. I went back to check out my newly captured shiny Pokemon. I slept the night in my sleeping bag to heal. I started to expand my living situation. With all these Squirtles, I wanted to start making some pens to capture Pokemon and get them to breed, so that I had another way of finding shiny Pokemon that wasn't just doing encounters in the grass. I spent the day expanding and hatching more of the Squirtle eggs that I stole. I noticed that the Squirtles were uncomfortable, so I moved them into a pen where the water was, and they seemed much happier. I was unsure at first if it would have an effect on the breeding skill, but it turns out if a Pokemon is happy in its environment, then once a day it will give you an item depending on its typing, which then you can use to make more materials. For the rest of the day I got trapped and chased by the Squirtle parents. I made it back in one piece, slept to heal, and started my day. I travelled a bit further away and found some long grass where even more Pokemon spawn depending on the biome that they're in. After some battling I explored further. I found a much larger beach and water area and I found a wild Blastoise and Octillery. There were some eggs next to them so I took the risk and stole them. They were either going to turn into Squirtles or Remoraids. I got back home and hatched the eggs and they turned out to be Remoraids. But this meant I could start breeding them. I went out with Bulbasaur to gather stuff. As night time fell I found myself in the desert biome again and came across a structure. I didn't want to explore it just yet but with being so close to where I was living, I could head back at any point. In front of the giant building was a reddish egg, which I took, and then I went back for another Bulbasaur egg. The red egg turned out to be a Diglett. My Remoraids also laid an egg, so I collected them and went off to explore. Heading further south through the desert biome, I found a couple of Garchomp parents protecting their eggs, and the start of a snow biome. I checked out the snow encounters and found a Delibird. I also found out that my Ponyta can scale mountains, and then of course, I went back to steal a Garchomp egg. The Garchomp ran into me though and turned out to be level 50. Holy crap. The Garchomp was wiping my entire team, and I was down to my last member. It was a Mareep that I had befriended the day prior. It somehow came through, and I managed to escape with some dragon eggs. It took the whole day, but I had my first baby dragon. I spent the day training up my Pokemon, and my Bulbasaur finally evolved into an Ivasaur. Day 15, I stumbled into one of the Venusaur parents from the eggs that I stole. After encountering it, I saw that it was level 21, which was strange, because Venusaur normally has to be level 36. So I thought, hey, why not try to capture it? After a bunch of battling and trying, I finally caught the Venusaur, which was great. With Venusaur being a fully evolved Pokemon that knew cut, I was able to finally cut down the massive trees that were everywhere to get even more resources. I now was able to clear the island and start shaping it how I wanted. I went back to check out the graveyard and found an item. It turned out to be a secret key, which I bet was for the giant building. After some more egg hatching and training, I went back to drop off some Pokemon. My pens were starting to get a bit full now. I needed to make some more space, so I took my chop out and started to build some more pens. I found a great little water spot and placed Squirtle in there with a Mareep. With them being in the same egg group, I was hoping that the Mareep would be able to breed some Squirtle legs. After finding the secret key from yesterday, I went to see if it would open the door to the giant building, and it did. I went inside to see what I could find. I found some Ultra Balls scattered around, but was also run into some super high level Pokemon like Ninetales and Growlifts. I left the building to go heal. I hatched some of the eggs that my Pokemon had made, and I also had to train up some of my Pokemon so that I could survive in the building. I finally found a female Squirtle and I caught it. Took it back to the pen and started to improve and build even more pens. I placed two Mareeps together in hoping to breed a shiny Mareep and grab some of the eggs before finishing off the night by collecting some resources for more pens. It was time to start organizing if I wanted wanted to start my own porky farm for breeding shinies. I spent the day sorting out the pens, training, hatching, and gathering resources. Now hatching the eggs was getting a bit crazy. Having to pick up the egg and do the steps to see if it was shiny with the amount I was collecting was becoming frustrating. But luckily Porky Wilds has a way around this, and all I needed was a Pokemon with a field move attack. If I found a Pokemon with this field move, I could attack the egg in a battle, see if it shines, and then if it doesn't, I could defeat the egg so that there was more room for other eggs to spawn in. So I went out to find a Pokemon that had attack. I went to the desert biome and found a Drapion, but it wiped my entire team. This was going to be tough, so I tried a Houndoom near the graveyard instead, but the same thing happened. All the attack Pokemon were just too high of a level for me right now. I went home to heal, craft some more Pokeballs, and tried again, but it wiped me out a second time. I knew I could get an attack Pokemon soon, so in order to prepare, I took the Machop and Venusaur to grab resources, and to expand the farm like crazy. It took me three whole days to grab resources and really expand the shiny hunting farm. I want to make sure it was going to be able to house as many Pokemon 
Hoffman as possible and was really easy to navigate. And after some days, it started to look really good. I used all of day 27 to level up Venusaur. I needed some stronger Pokemon if I was going to be able to capture a Pokemon that had attack. I went home to craft more items, came across two Chinglings and took them home and placed them in a pen. Stole and hatched some more Bulbasaur eggs and put them in a pen of their own as well. Turns out the Bulbasaur were unhappy in their pen, so I built them a new pen closer to their favourite environment. Heading into the night, the Houndoom headed closer to my home, so I fought it again and lost again. After healing, I spent the day training up Venusaur some more. I finally came across a Pokemon that knew attack and would be easier to capture. A Sandile. After a bit of a battle, I caught him and I finally had my attacker to quickly check eggs. This was perfect. I wiped out all the eggs on my Poké farm looking for shinies and clearing them out so that my Pokemon could breed more. I spent the whole day wiping out eggs in the farm and exploring the beach, attacking all the eggs I've been finding up to now. It was time to head back to the Garchomp spot now that I knew it was much easier to check the eggs and now that I could run away. The Garchomps chased me for a bit and I escaped into the snow biome and then I came across a volcanic biome for the first time. There were rock and fire types here. I came across a few Geodudes and a Slugma. I left the biome for now and ended up at another beach. Across the beach were tons of Pokeballs so I took as many as I could. I found some more eggs for Sandy the Sandile to take out. I got back to the desert biome and found a Marowak nest and let Sandy check all the eggs and that took the entire day. After a couple of days I went back to the Poke farm and a lot of eggs had appeared. I checked them all and organized some of the Pokemon into better pens. I spent the day wiping out eggs and when night time fell I went to go check out a mysterious Poke doll I'd noticed in a graveyard. I spoke to it and got attacked by a Mimikyu. After some battling against the Mimikyu, which looks amazing in sprite form in this game, I finally caught it. It had the field move charm that I'd never seen before, which affected all of my Pokemon in the Poke farm. Then I spent the day wiping out the eggs for shiny hunting. I used day 39 to start training Sandy and check the rest of the eggs. Day 40 I went to the graveyard and ended up capturing a Mistrevus, which was pretty cool. I then headed into the grass to train and shiny hunt. I took Venusaur to gather resources and came across some more new Pokemon like Magikarp and Masquerade. Day 42 I had a plan to go explore the building once again, so I went and healed up, crafted some items and got into the building. The building was a maze full of high level 30 to 40 Pokemon. There were Ultra Balls scattered everywhere and I was finding Pokemon like Rapidash, Coughing and Magmars. But one of the more interesting Pokemon that I was coming across was a Ditto. The last time I'd seen a building that had Dittos in it was Cinnabar Island in Pokemon Red, Blue and Yellow, which had documents about breeding Dittos for Mewtwo. So did this place have some kind of connection? Another reason I was so happy to find Dittos was that it meant I had an infinite supply to capture from my Pokemon pens for breeding. I spent three whole days going through the maze collecting Ultra Balls and Dittos. I didn't want to carry on through the maze until I had high level Pokemon, but this was a great training spot and Ditto collecting area. After getting home, I was clearing out some of the eggs with Sandy when this happened. Oh! Yo, a shiny egg. What? Finally, dude. Oh my god, I've checked so many eggs. Okay, so... I run. And then... Grab it. Hopefully this works. Oh my god, hopefully I get it now because that means it's been exactly 40 days since our first shiny Pokemon. Yo, there it is! Oh my god, it looks so sick, dude. Yes! Oh my god, our second shiny member is finally here. We got that candy floss sheep. Candy. Oh, dude, that's sick. Yes. After finding my second shiny Pokemon, I spent the day attacking the rest of the eggs and Sandy evolved into Krokorok. Is that how you say its name? Krokorok. What? Krokorok. Krokorok. Yeah, that's what I said. You said Krokorok. 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 After finding my second shiny Pokemon, I spent the day attacking the rest of the eggs and Sandy evolved into a Krokorok. You said Krokorok. 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 After finding my second shiny Pokemon, I spent the day attacking the rest of the eggs and Sandy evolved into Krokorok. Hopefully I never have to say that ever again. I went back into the building to do some more exploring and to capture some more Dittos for my Pokey farm. I wanted to start separating certain Pokemon with each Ditto so that I could try and shiny hunt some of my favourite Pokemon. I spent day 50 checking more eggs and sorting out Dittos that I'd captured. I was now halfway through my challenge and honestly, I'm loving playing this game so far. If you're enjoying up to this point, make sure you do hit that subscribe button. I checked out some more eggs. Now that I had the Dittos, I was able to easily make Gibble eggs and so much more. I slept in my sleeping bag to heal my team. I finally wanted to evolve and train up the shinies I'd caught, so I headed out to train. After some training, my shiny combi finally evolved into a shiny Vespiquen, which looks amazing. From day 53 to 57, I trained up my shiny Mareep. On day 55, it evolved into a shiny Flaffy. And then on day 57, it evolved into shiny Ampharos, which has a silver color in this game. At the end of day 57, I decided to finally build myself a new home right next to my Poké Farm. So I grabbed some 
resources and put my chop to work. I went out to cut some of the bigger trees down. To build up some walls needed for the house, I needed logs and grass, so I took down everything that I could see. After finishing off the house, I headed inside and I got my chop out. And it turns out there's a ton of customization for inside the house as well, so I spent the day decorating the start of my brand new home. After finishing off the house for a couple of days, all my Pokemon had got busy, so I went out with Sandy to clear out all the eggs. I crafted some items and headed into the building. I wanted some extra Pokemon to breed, and I also wanted to upgrade my Ponyta to a Rapidash. That way I could leave Ponyta here to breed for a shiny, and I could ride around on a Rapidash. I also managed to find and capture another Ditto. I spent a couple of extra days looking for Dittos. It was time to really expand the Pokey farm now. Now that I had more Dittos, I made more separated pens for the shinies I really wanted to breed. I made more gates that easily passed through to each other, and spent the night checking eggs. Day 65 I used to clear up eggs, and then on day 66, the Hound Doom from before that I defeated my team a bunch finally showed up again. And after an intense battle and having a couple of team members go down, I finally caught it to use it in one of my pens. I wanted to start to explore more of the world, so I needed a Pokemon with the field move Surf. Luckily, Pikachu can learn it, and I remember seeing some in some grass nearby. My first encounter, however, was a Charmander, which I caught for breeding, and then I finally found the Pikachu, so I caught that as well. I had a long journey ahead, so I used Day 68 to clear up some eggs, heal my team, and added Pikachu to my party before heading out. I took Pikachu to the edge of the water, and it transformed into Surfing Pikachu. I traveled for half a day before finding land again. I checked my map to see how much I had traveled. I came to a beach with a ton of new Pokemon and eggs that I'd not seen before. I battled a Wingle that I'd not come across yet, and at the end of the battle, Croc Rock finally evolved into Crocodile. I spent the night attacking Slowpoke eggs nearby a Slowking spawn. I battled the Slowking after taking out all the eggs nearby. I spent day 72 training Rapidash and Shiny hunting in some nearby grass. After finding a new area to battle and hunt, I continued to explore the new island, and ended up finding a Duraludon. I caught it, so it would be in the pens for when I got home. I found another ice biome, and right in the middle was a Machamp, which was too hard to capture, so for now I had to run away. I went to check out some more encounters like Aeron, Luron, and Snorun. After some more searching, I found a Skarmory. I had not found a Pokemon that I could not fly yet, so I caught the Skarmory. Right, so I somehow spent two entire days trying to capture this one Onyx. Oh my god. Onyx. Oh my god, Onyx. Seriously. It's not even a shiny or anything, it's just the most ridiculous. <laughs> oh my god. He better make a shiny because... Oh my god. I was getting so annoyed, but by the end of the two days, I finally caught it. I ended the day by getting a Blossom and a Drowsy. I came to a beach with a bunch of Pokeballs and Trainer Tip signs. I feel like this is where I was supposed to spawn at the start of my journey, just because of how much information and items were scattered around. After reading a few of the signs, some of the text turned into unknown writing, and some crazy music kicked in. I went into the grass and found an unknown, but I unfortunately killed it. After some more sign reading, it happened again, and I encountered the letter E unknown, and I managed to capture this one. After a bit more exploring, I found a beach with some insane Pokemon. There was a Dragonite nest and a wild Eevee. I battled the Eevee and I caught it. I really wanted a Dratini egg, so I had to be super careful here. I had a full team, so first I checked out all the eggs in case of a shiny. I checked the rest of the beach because there was a ton of Pokeballs for me to collect. I battled one of the Dragonites just to see how high of a level it was. It was level 55, holy crap. It knocked out two of my team and I escaped with just Rapid Ash left on 4 HP. So here's the plan. I can easily get another Pikachu, and now that I have Skarmory to fly me around, I don't need the Pikachu anymore. So I dropped it and stole a Dratini egg. The Dragonite parents chased me for miles into a forest nearby, and I spent some time hatching its child right in front of it. Then, in order to fast travel home, I had the Dragonite defeat Rapidash and the newly hatched child so that I could spawn back home. After being away for so long, I spent days 79 to 80 healing the team and checking out all the eggs on the farm. Day 81, I went back into the giant building. Now that I had some better team members, I wanted wanted to make it to the end to see what would happen. After an entire day going through the maze, I finally made it to the end. Oh my god. Oh my god, it's Mewtwo. Hang on. Please don't be shiny on the first encounter because I just want to know what level you are. Does this do anything? Nope. Humans. Oh my god, there's music. They cared nothing for me. Oh my god, it's straight up the movie me too, what? From the moment I first opened my eyes, they've sought to control me, but no more. Bro, this is epic, what? Why are you here? You seek to control me, just like the others. Only if you're shiny, I guess. Is this glitch City? It must be. An oppressive force surrounds you. Mewtwo unleashes its full power. 
Bro, this is so sick. What the hell, dude? Oh, it's only level 50. I thought it'd be higher. Look at the background animations and everything. Yeah, this is Glitch XA. Are you freaking kidding me? This is well cool. What? Oh my god. Right, what happens if I run? Can I run? It says can't escape, but is that just because... Right, if I do that, what happens then? You can literally just keep going back into it. So I wonder if this is how I'd shiny hunt it. It's a little bit slow, but at least I don't have to go for all the beginning text, I guess. Okay, I am nowhere near ready for this. But this is cool to know that this is what's at the end. And I know I can get to the end now. So yeah, Armored Mewtwo from the first Pokemon movie is literally in this game. That's insane. I have some plans for him, but that's for another time. I spent some time hunting in this room because there seemed to be a higher chance to find Dittos in here. So I caught a few before leaving. After finding my way out of the building, it was time for some more expanding because look at how many Dittos I have now. It's time to get some proper breeding done. Over days 85 to 88, I expanded the current Pokey farm and then decided to make another one just above my house. This one was gonna be a lot more organized. I set up pens with Charmander Eevee and Duraludon and everything else that I've been finding on my journey so far. Now that the farm was set up, I used the next couple of days to shiny check the eggs. I now had a plan for my final day, but it needed some setup first, so it was time to train my Pokemon. I managed to find another Pikachu and some other Pokemon that I'd not come across yet. It was time to explore a bunch more of the world in case I could find some more structures with legendaries just like the giant building. So I hopped on Scarberry and started flying around the world to fill up my map. At the end of the day, I found a new Savannah biome. The Savannah had rare Pokemon like a wild Eevee. If I ever needed a shiny hunt here, I could just head back. I checked out my map, and holy crap, this map is insane. I finally reached the end of the map at one point, and it asked me if I wanted to travel to a new island. But just in case anything bad happened, I clicked no for now. While flying back home, I found my Lotic in the desert of all places. It was almost time to put my final shiny hunt in preparation. After 96 days and only finding two shiny Pokemon, it made me really want to end on a banger shiny Pokemon. I had spent a lot of time just setting up the farm and playing the game in general, so I didn't do as much shiny hunting as I wanted. So I spent day 96 to 97 checking out all the eggs before flying away to do one last thing for my end game. It was time. I flew back to the beach to battle and capture one of the Dragonites that we saw earlier on. After some battling, it finally captured, and now I had a level 55 Dragonite. I flew back home on Skarmory. I healed up my final team setup and left the farm, entered the desert, and finally found the Desert Temple. If Mewtwo was at the end of the giant building, then something had to be at the end of the Desert Temple, and I planned on shiny hunting for it. I entered the temple and for a maze this place was crazy. Encounters around every corner, wild aggressive dusclops chasing you in the darkness, even using rapid ash to light up my surrounding area barely did anything to help out. But after a lot of struggle I finally made it to the final room. Oh my god it's Volcarona. Yo this is sick. All right let's see what level it is and it's time to shiny him. Oh my god it's level 60. Holy crap, it's level 60. Um, am I gonna be able to do this? Time to shiny hunt a Volcarona, which is considered a legendary Pokemon in this game. With the odds being 1 in 256, I hoped it would not take too long. And after 20 minutes... <gasps> yes! Shiny Volcarona! Oh my god! That's not like 20 minutes! What? Okay. I'm actually really, really scared for this. It's level 60. I'm just gonna try my best. I don't know what the catch rate is or anything, but let's try this. Oh my god, Slam, stop missing. It's missed three times. What's the accuracy on Slam? Just throw yourself at it, Dragonite. Oh my god, it's done half health. Okay. Okay. One thing I can do is if I bring out Crook Die. Oh wait, no, did I get rid of Sand Attack? I think I got rid of Sand Attack now that I think about it. Let me just double check. Yeah, anything on Crocodile will absolutely kill it. Okay, let's bring up Venusaur. Oh my god, are you kidding me? I've only got Crocodile left. And it's not shaking on anything. Oh, dude, are you kidding me? <laughs> So yeah, I failed the first time, but I also panicked. Next time I find this thing, it'll be a different story. I started the hunt once again, and as much as I wanted it to show up in another 20 minutes, it took two and a half hours. But finally... <gasps> okay, there we go. Oh no. Oh my god. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> Oh, I'm so glad I didn't fail it twice. Oh 
my god. <laughs> we actually did it. Since last checking my island, my Pokemon farm had collected quite a lot of eggs, so I spent the first day cleaning up all of the eggs checking for any potential shiny Pokemon. I slept to heal my team and went travelling. After finding one of the seven shiny legendary Pokemon, I had to figure out how to find the rest. While searching the desert, I found an abandoned building which turned out to be a fossil revival centre. It needed power and I needed fossils, so I'll return to this place later. I spent the rest of my day travelling and filling out my map. While filling out my map, I found a second graveyard which had a Spiritomb body. I spoke to it and it said, bring 107. Unfortunately, I had 107 other things to be doing right now, so I left it alone. After leaving, I came to a savannah biome where I found a wild Sylveon. After some battling, I managed to capture it. I also found a Nido King, two great Pokemon I can use to breed some great shinies, so I caught the Nido King as well. After capturing the Nido King, I explored some more. I found some items like a Pokeball, and then I came across a wild Chansey. The last one that I found had ran away from me, so this time I wanted to try and capture it. After a whole day, I finally caught the Chansey. I left the battle and flew to my right only to find a wild Glaceon. Five days in and I was already finding some rare Pokemon for my farm. This was great. I spent all of day 106 and 107 filling in my map as much as possible. Day 108 I found a wild Litwick and Blastoise while exploring the last bit of my island and I captured them both. In my last adventure I found the edge of my world. After exploring a lot of my map and not finding any new places for legendaries, I decided it was time to risk it and see if I could find another island. I came to the edge of the map and a new island started to generate. Once here, I found a beach with some items and similar starting Pokemon walking around. This was a whole new island for me to explore and I could still travel back to my original island. I searched some more and found a mysterious cave and walked inside. There was a strange rock with an inscription on it. When reading the inscriptions, it came up with recipes. A certain amount of items needed with a spell tag to complete them. So, I now had myself a quest. Find these items and return to see what will happen. And as I left, I found a wild Lapras. But like an idiot, I poisoned it and it died. I checked out the rest of the new island. There was a beach with a ton of Pokeballs and a lot of similar biomes and wild Pokemon. Before leaving the island, I checked back into the cave to write down exactly what I needed to bring back. I went back to my base and healed. Some of the items I needed could be given to me by my own Pokemon once a day. So I began collecting resources to work on an extra part of my base, the farming farm, where I could farm items from certain Pokemon each day. After collecting enough resources, I started to build the farming farm with Machop. I finished up the farming farm, grabbed some eggs of some Pokemon types that I wanted to farm and spent the night hatching the eggs. I grabbed even more eggs to hatch and started to place Pokemon inside the pens. Each Pokemon of a certain type needs certain requirements to be happy. If they are happy in their Pokemon pen, then once a day you'll get a guaranteed item from that Pokemon depending on its typing. I took Crocodile out with me by using its field move Dig. I was able to dig up different biomes that I could place in the pens to make my Pokemon happy. During day 116 while gathering resources, I realised two of the items that I needed for the mysterious cave, which were Hardstone and Nevermelt Ice, can just be found by digging with Crocodile in certain biomes. I crafted some more Pokeballs so that I was ready to shiny hunt and made more of my Pokemon happy in the farming farm. I checked what I needed for a spell tag and one of the items required me to have a ghost type Pokemon. Luckily there had been a mischievous near the graveyard that I'd seen which was friendly, so I grabbed it and put it into one of the pens. After talking to it, it gave me some life force, so I hurried back to my base to create my first ever spell tag. One item down and a whole lot more to go. I headed back out to the ice biome to dig up some nevermelt ice and while digging, this happened. Yo, shiny deli bird. Oh my god. I found a shiny deli bird. Yo. Just while I'm collecting the nevermelt ice. Oh, yo, that's the first shiny of these next 100 days. Let's go. Oh, crap. Am I even ready for this? Right. Um. Yo, deli bird is a sick shiny. Oh my god, that present did so much. And it woke up straight away. Heal me. Finally. Oh my god. That took way too long. Holy. Oh my god. Well. There's our next shiny, a deli bird, that's sick. It took me a whole day, but the next shiny for my shiny hunting journey had been found. A shiny deli bird in the ice biome. I spent the rest of the day collecting nevermelt ice I needed and some hard stone from the volcanic biome. I went back to my base, healed and checked my items. I now had enough hard stone and nevermelt ice with a spell tag to complete or trigger what would ever happen in the mysterious cave. I prepped my team and items and traveled back to the new island. I entered the cave and chose the hard stone choice. Oh, it's the Reggie. Wait, what Reggie is that? Is that Reggie Rock? It's gotta be Reggie Rock, right? Whoa, this is cool. Oh my god, it launched me away. Wait, so what is this now? Is that Reggie Gigas and then it's just brought in Reggie Rock? Reggie Thickass, why'd you do that? Za, 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 za. No, I know I didn't save. I saved before I came in here, so we're fine for now. Oh. So the Reggies are the other legends, and they're all made in this cave. 
You're the music. All right, so we've got Reggie Rock, level 40. That is very nice. So if Reggie Gigas is in the background and he summons them, can we get Reggie Gigas at some point? So that means this was Reggie Rock. The metal court has to be steel, and the never melt ice has to be Reggie Ice. So does that mean they put Reggie Draco and Reggie Lecky in here as well? Hang on, can I run? Yeah, I want to go for this thing right now. <laughs> I want to go for this thing right now. It's just runaways like Volcarona, so if I try and talk to Reggie Gigas, nothing happens. Okay, so Reggie Rock's just there. So what happens if I if I leave and come back in? Is he just always there? So just like that, it was time to hunt our next shiny legendary, Reggie Rock. I spent days 122 to 126 encountering the Reggie Rock, leaving and encountering it again. I was very motivated to find the shiny legendary, but also very scared for when the battle arrives. The Reggies are some of the hardest mons to capture, and I hope I'd prepared enough items for when it does appear. <gasps> Yo! Shiny Reggie Rock! Oh my god! That took just under 40 minutes. Oh my god. Alright, oh my god, I was so out of it. I was checking my YouTube. <laughs> oh my god, here we go, here we go, here we go. This, this was a battle. I managed to get one Razor Leaf in with Venusaur to get it on half HP before it wiped it out. Then I managed to paralyze it with Ampharos. After some tackles, it was down to red HP. I used my last heavy ball, no luck. I still had plenty of other balls, but they were my best ones for capturing. I brought out Rapidash to use Growl over and over again to lower its attack. I needed to stay in this battle as long as possible. There is no way to heal in Pokewilds in battle as far as I know, and the PP does not exist. So I was determined to make this battle last as long as it needed to. Let's go! We got the Reggie Rock, yes, dude! In a Pokeball and everything. Shiny Reggie Rock has been claimed. Pikesville Reggie Rock was sent to the last safe place. Oh, simple stones. Such a creation. Each one so unique, but only stones, even in the head. I desire more. See you later, Reggie Thick Ass. Ah, see, I knew, I knew. Good thing I checked this. So it sent it to the last known area where it's safe, but because I'm on a fresh island technically, it sends it here. So I need to leave someone behind to take the Regirock with me, and then come back and get them later on. Take the Regirock with us. I will come back for the Rapidash. Better still be here. What can he do? He can smash. Let's have a look at him. Oh dude, it looks so sick. So yeah, I had my second shiny legendary in Pokewilds, a shiny Regirock. I built a mini capture point here to keep anything I capture safe here until I need to collect it. I finally got back to my base to heal up my team. After all the excitement of finding a shiny legendary, it was time for a chill couple of days on the farm checking my eggs. Now I had a plan. I wanted to hunt shiny Regiice and Registeel to join my shiny Regirock. So I now knew what I needed to prepare. I had the items ready for shiny hunting Regiice, but I wanted my team to be even more prepared. It was already hard enough capturing Regirock, so I wanted to be over prepared. Prepared. I went to shiny hunt in the volcanic area hoping for a shiny fire type with the risk of maybe finding a shiny rock type and after barely any time hunting there <gasps> Shiny magma yo, I've just died. Oh my god. Yo, that's sick. We've got a shiny fire type. Yes All right Let's capture this. After some battling, I managed to capture the shiny magma. Awesome. The exact typing I wanted and a sick shiny on top of that. I went back to the base to get it straight on the team. I checked it out and healed up the team. Now it was time to train. I spent four whole days leveling up each member of my team so they would be ready for the fight against the next Reggie. I trained for a while and while training, I didn't find any shiny Pokemon. Then I realized I had had a shiny from the grasslands, the ice biome and the volcanic area. So it would be nice to get a shiny from every area. So I traveled to the savannah biome and hunted there for a few days. I spent an extra four days with Rapidash at the front of my party finding all sorts of rare and interesting Pokemon that I'd not seen yet. I barely spent any time in the savannah last time, so it was nice to see a whole bunch of cool Pokemon that I'd not seen yet. And then on day 142... Oh, Shiny Caterpie. Yes. I love Shiny Caterpie. Oh my God, that means I can get a Shiny Butterfree. Oh my God, that means I can get a Shiny Butterfree. Dude, there was so much cool stuff in this grass. But I am so glad it's the Caterpie. Oh my god, it's level 47. That means in two levels. Oh, I'm a shiny butterfree. Oh my god, one ball as well. Full HP. <gasps> Let's go. I had another shiny for my collection, and one of my all-time favorites, Shiny Caterpie. Caterpie was my first ever shiny Pokemon in both Let's Go Pikachu and Pokemon Ultra Sun and Moon. And Butterfree is one of my favorite Pokemon in general, so I went to train it so I could evolve it right away. Hey, here we go. 
Show me that orange metapod. Oh, dude, that looks sick. All right, here's the shiny butterfree. Oh my god, that looks so good. Yo, that looks so good. Oh my god, yes. I hope it learns all the powders. For days 145 to 147, I trained my team some more. I was hoping Butterfree would learn some moves like the powder moves, which would be helpful for the Reggie Ice, but sadly, it did not. I spent days 148 to 150 checking and clearing my eggs and farming as many items as possible to craft Pokeballs for my battle against, hopefully, shiny Reggie Ice. It was time. I crafted everything I needed, healed up my team, and made a brand new spell tag and got all of my Nevermelt Ice and headed back to the Reggie Cave. It was time to shiny hunt Reggie Ice. I spent a couple of days running from the Reggie Ice, and then on day 153. Oh! Shiny Reggie Ice. <laughs> they caught me off guard so much. Oh my god. Right, here we go. That did not take too long at all. That took like two in game days. Now I thought the last battle was hard, but oh my god this. I started the battle by fire spinning the Reggie Ice to do some decent damage. It froze Rapidash, so I switched to Shiny Ampharos and paralyzed it with Thundershock and got it down to red HP. Then the ball throwing began. The ball throwing. So many balls. I threw balls while Ampharos was out, it died. Threw balls while Rapidash and Crocodile were out, they died. I threw it Magma and so it had Smoke Scream. I Smoke Screamed the Un 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 until it had no more accuracy. It was now red HP, paralyzed, and was hitting moves every 20 turns or so. And then after a 30 minute battle. Oh my god. Oh my god. I feel like I could have run away and had a family in the time it took to capture that Reggie Ice. Oh my god. That took so long. They may as well make me Dialga with how long that took because all my time in the world is now gone. I had one Pokemon left. Holy dude, I am not looking forward to Registeel. Cold, very cold, too cold. Yeah, you better freeze to death with how long that took. Oh my god. Jeez, dude. I, I, I can't tell you. I, I wish I knew the timestamp that I started that battle on. It must have been a solid 20 minutes. It had to be a solid 20 minutes. I'm sure narration me will tell you. The battle itself took five days, so it was now day 158. I grabbed my brand new shiny Reggie Ice and added it to the team, came home and healed up the team. I finally figured out how to find fossils in the game. I took my Onyx out with Dig to find spots in the desert that gave me fossils like the Helix Fossil, Skull Fossil, and then the big one, the Old Amber, which would have Aerodactyl. I rushed to the fossil lab to revive it right away. Oh, this is really cool. Aerodactyl. Or you have to fight it and then capture it. Let's go. We got an Aerodactyl. So I managed to capture the first Aerodactyl, but then I realized I had a second old Amber, so I put it into the machine, encountered the Aerodactyl, and ran away. The Aerodactyl was still there, so I did it a few more times and noticed that the level and gender changed each time. That's it. I can hunt a shiny fossil Pokemon, and with it being Aerodactyl, I needed to. So I started what would be my longest shiny hunt in-game-wise so far. The shiny Aerodactyl took not one day, not two days, not three days, but 15 whole Pokewild days before this happened. Yes! Shiny Aerodactyl. Oh my god, that took forever. <laughs> right now, I just gotta try and capture it. Ooh, oh, it looks so good. Oh no, actually, I don't want to burn it. Oh my god, yes, let's go. I got it. Oh my god, that took forever to get. Ooh. Yo, Shiny Aerodactyl is sick, what? Finally, after 15 days, I hurried back to the base to check it out and... Oh, it can fly as well. And it can smash. That's pretty cool. It's not shiny. Oh, is that the other one I caught? Did I capture two? Oh, my sleeping bag's not here anymore. Oh my god, I slept outside the building, didn't I? Level 47. There we go. There's the proper one. Oh my god. So yeah, I debated myself, because I forgot I slept outside the fossil lab to heal before the shiny hunt. Oops. But there it is, my shiny fossil Aerodactyl. After a lot of shiny hunting, I spent the next four days capturing some dittos for the Porky Farm. For some of the new Pokemon we caught early on, like Nidoking and Sylveon, to breed with. Built some more farming farm pens, and checked out all of the eggs on the farm. Day 181, I started out by collecting eggs until I realised something. I need metal coats for Registeel, and the only way to get them is to have Steel Pokemon gift them to you once a day. 
today. That meant I only had 19 days left and I needed 47 metal cores. It was time to get to work. I found my Duraladon and took an egg to get two Duraladons in my pens. I now had four Duraladons, but with them being part Dragon type, they had a 1 in 3 chance to give me a metal core, so I needed more Steel type Pokemon. I spent the rest of the day checking my eggs in case of Shiny Pokemon. I went to the desert biome and found some Bronzongs and Bronzors. Perfect. They will give me either metal coats or Psy energies. The plan is to capture as many Steel types as possible, check them daily until we have 47 metal cores. We're cutting it close, but let's see if we can get them all before the end of the 200 days. I came across a sand slash nest and checked out all of the eggs with no shiny luck. I went back to the farming farm and made a brand new pen for the Bronzongs and Bronzors. I filled it out with light clay which I got from the mountains nearby and placed them in the pen. After making the new pen, I needed some space in my team so I could start capturing as many Pokemon as possible. So I made a decorative pen for all of my shiny Pokemon. I placed all of my shiny Pokemon in the pen. I added statues, flowers and other details to make it stand out more than all of the other pens. I then headed out to find more Steel Pokemon and found more Duraladons. I spent day 188 exploring the map looking for Steel types. I went back to the base, checked for Metal Coats and got some. I then travelled some more and came across a Duraladon nest. I grabbed two eggs and then I caught the parents. I travelled back to collect more Metal Coats and to place more Duraladons into the pens. Ten days left to get all of the coats I needed for Registeel. We can do this. I spent the next couple of days trying to find the nest I found on day 190, but had zero luck trying to find it, but I got a couple of days worth of Metal Coats. And then it hit me. There is grass just outside the Desert Temple where I can find Bronzors. So here's the plan. Spend the day and night capturing as many as possible. Rush back home and place them in the pen. Collect the items and repeat. Time was against me, but I was determined to do this. I spent the next four days going from the desert to my home capturing Bronzors and gathering Metal Coats from my farming farm. Getting closer to my goal with each passing day. And then, funny story. <gasps> I found a shiny one. <laughs> what? <laughs> Is it? Oh my god. <laughs> so yeah, while farming the bronzors, I found a shiny bronzor. Nice. I was getting so many metal coats now that I decided to spend day 199 gathering from every tree in sight. Registeer was going to be a hard one to capture, so I wanted as many Pokeballs as possible to craft for the final shiny hunt. I held my breath as I collected the last few items from my bronzor farm and checked the item menu. I needed 47 metal coats altogether. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Give me metal coats, give me metal coats. We need to go get Registeel. Give me Metal Coats, please. Psy Energy. Right, I'm putting you up for adoption if you give me Psy Energy Bronzors. <sighs> right, how many do I have? Please, 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 please. 49. Oh my god, yes. Okay, that's perfect. Let's go grab the squad and go Shiny Hunter Registeel. It was finally time. I healed up my team, crafted my balls, and headed off to do my last Shiny Legendary Hunt of the 200 days, Registeel. So, this Shiny Hunt. Let's talk about it. My longest in-game hunt so far was Shiny Aerodactyl, which took 15 days. I think in all, it took me one week to find this Registeel. Remember, one in 256 odds, so nothing crazy, but that's RNG for you. Anyway, on the seventh day, it had finally arrived. Is that it? Oh my god. Oh. No, I'm just gonna capture the thing. Oh my god. It shook three times. Oh my god, yes. Oh, finally, dude. Oh my god, that took so long. That took so long. Metal's from underground, so tough, so flexible, yet it's so old. It has unearthly presence. I desire more. Thanks, Reggie Thickass. Since I started this adventure, I haven't moved my base from the beach that I spawned on. My egg farm is messy and my house is horrible, so it's time to fix that. I found a big open area inside a nearby forest and got Venusaur to start cutting down trees in the area. I got Machop to start building the first part of the new egg farm with a small bridge at the bottom. After defeating a ghost, my Machop finally evolved into a Machoke. I spent the rest of the day building giant square pens for each of my Pokemon for breeding. Bigger pens meant more eggs, which meant more shiny Pokemon checks. I cleared high 
half a forest below the pens to make more room and had Machog build a lot more pens. I realised with each pen being about 5x5 five five, I needed a ton more room, so I spent the next few days clearing out an entire forest with Venusaur, which was great because I also got a ton more resources. It took 4 entire days to clear the forest away, but afterwards I had a ton more room for Machoke to build, so we got to work on the breeding pens. Now that the pens were made, it was time to bring over all of the Pokemon from the old pens. I planned to have each pen linked with a ditto, so hopefully I had enough to cover the amount I had made, but if not, I could always head back to the giant building to capture some more dittos. All the days going back and forth was a bit of a pain, but seeing it all come together was definitely worth it. While picking up the Pokemon and going back to my old base, I had to keep seeing my old ugly house. So, I needed a brand new place to live. Luckily, just above from the new pens had a great place with just a small bit of water. So, I cut down some trees with Venusaur. I built a bridge across the water with Machoke so I had easy access to the pens. I took Crocodile and by using Dig, I was able to put some grass down the sides of the bridge and some statues at the top to make it look proper fancy. Then, I moved on to building up the house with Machoke. I wanted a decent sized house but it didn't need to be anything ridiculous. I also built a pen on either side of the house. One for my shiny Pokemon, and one for my everyday use Pokemon like Venusaur and Machoke. After finishing off the house, I brought over all of the shiny Pokemon to place in the pen by the house. I built some campfires for crafting and some storage bins which I had never used before. I decorated the shiny Pokemon pen and headed inside the house to decorate inside there as well. Now that the breeding farm and house were all set up, I needed a new farming farm to get items from Pokemon. I built a small bridge connecting from the main bridge where I planned to make an area for it. I cut down a lot more trees with Venusaur and then took Machoke to build up the pens for the farming farm. I finished the first set of pens, checked my Pokemon for items and used the day to rest. The first thing I wanted to farm was magnets. Magnets are useful for two things, crafting regular Pokeballs, but they were also needed for one of the Regis, so it's best to build up a magnet farm early, so I headed off to find as many electric Pokemon as possible. I found some Pichus in the grass and caught them. I grabbed all the Pichus I had caught and a Pikachu I had in the old farming farm and placed them in the pens. Day 223, I discovered that by using Headbutt on the cactuses in the desert, I could find my all-time favourite Pokemon, Maractus. I wanted to find a shiny one, but after Headbutting some cactuses, it seems it's it's only one Maractus per cactus. I spent the day checking cactuses on the off chance I could find a shiny Maractus. I started the day by grabbing some more magnets and doing some final Maractus checks in the desert. I checked a storage bin for the first time, and turns out these things are great. Not only can you store your Pokemon in there, but you can also release and nickname Mons from here as well. Now thanks to you guys in the comments, I recently learned that there is a way to heal Pokemon in battle, and the way to do this is by farming mill tanks to get Moomoo milk. So I headed off to where I remembered seeing a mill tank nest and caught one. I hatched some Miltank eggs and started to place them in the pens, then I travelled back to the nest to pick up some more eggs. While travelling back from the nest, I came across the graveyard where I found the Spiritomb Rock. It asked for 107 again, but this time it showed me what it wanted. It was Life Force, an item that you can get daily if you have Ghost-type Pokemon set up. I wanted a shiny Spiritomb, so I planned to make a Ghost Farm to get as much Life Force as possible. I started the day by grabbing Magnets and Moomoo Moo Milk from the farm, hatched the rest of the Miltank eggs I had and placed them in the extra pens. I checked my other Pokemon for items and finally got enough to make a soft bed in. Now, I had a couple of goals. One was to get the shiny Spiritomb, but now that I had the storage bins, I was able to keep Pokemon, so I decided to start a Pokemon Living Dex. I wanted to get one of every Pokemon to make my own Pokedex, seeing as how there isn't one in the game yet. So, I made a spreadsheet on the side to keep track of what I had captured and stored. I hatched some eggs to start the Living Dex. Then I built a brand new pen next to the house to store newly captured Pokemon for the Living Dex. I placed my brand new bed into the house and slept to heal, and it was so much faster than the sleeping bag. Then, I headed to one of the pens where I left some grass so that I could do some shiny hunting and some training there. It was time to start filling up the Living Dex. I went into the grass and caught a Fampi, Natu, another Fampi, and a Shroomish, and at the end of the day my Nidoran evolved into a Nidorino, and I stored them all away. At the start of the day I caught a Ledibur, then I went over to the farming farm to grab some magnets and Moomoo milk. I placed the Ledibur in the pen as well. I grabbed Machoke and started to work on the next lot of pens, which would be to house Ghost-type Pokemon to gain life force each day for the Spiritomb. 
I finished the brand new pen and went off to head back to the graveyard so I could find some ghost type Pokemon and some other Pokemon needed for the living decks. First thing I found was a Chimeco, and then I spent the rest of the night fighting a Haunter. I finally caught the Haunter after a whole night of battling. I also managed to get a Dusclops, Mistrevus, Fampy evolved into Donphan, I got a Drifloon, and then spent the rest of the day and night fighting an Absol. The Absol almost wiped my entire team, and with Machoke I accidentally fainted it, so that was all for nothing. I went back to the house to heal, collected the ghost types I had captured and started to place Cursed Soil down in the pens, so that they would be happy enough to give me life for each day, but it turns out I didn't have enough cursed soil for all the pens. I took Crocodile to a nearby graveyard to collect more cursed soil with Dig, and while searching, I found a Dusk Storm. After collecting enough soil, I headed back to fill in the rest of the pens and to drop off the ghost Pokemon. I picked up some other items like Moomy Milk and got my first couple of Life Force. Then, I headed back to the old breeding farm and collected the Squirtles and Dratini before going back and putting them into the storage as part of the living decks. I took Venusaur and made an exit for myself out of the capturing pen so that I could easily leave whenever I wanted. I collected some Life Force and then left the base to pick up a friendly Numel and Remoraid. I also grabbed Glaceon and Aerodactyl from the breeding pens and stored them with the others. I then caught another Shroomish and Natu with plans to evolve them and then Squirtle evolved into Wartortle for the decks. I collected more Life Force, grabbed Unknown from the pens and Bronzor from the old farming farm and stored them. Caught a Maku Heater and Pinsir and then went back to the graveyard and started a battle against the Mistrevus. I caught the Mistrevus and also found a couple of Duskulls. I came across the Absol again and thought it was going to wipe out my entire team, but luckily I managed to capture this one. I ended the night by running into a ghost. I had made a Sylph Scope back at the base, ready for any ghost that I might run into. I used it and I identified the ghost as a Ghastly. I threw a level ball and captured it. Searching some more, I found a couple of extra Duskulls. By getting plenty of ghost types, it meant that I would be getting a ton of life force each day, and with needing 107 for the Spiritomb, it was looking good. I started the day by capturing one more ghost type, and then while travelling back to the base, I came across an old friend. It was the Pikachu from the first 100 days that I had left in order to pick up the Dragonite. I knew this because when I interacted with it, it gave me a magnet, and it also had 0 HP. So, I caught it and brought it back with me. When I got back, I placed some of the ghost types into the pens. I grabbed the rest of my captured Pokemon, placed them in the farming farm, and collected the items. Then, it was time to wipe out all the eggs on the farm to check for shinies, and to make room for new eggs. It took the next two days to egg check with Crocodile, and I also grabbed more life force. I needed some metal coats, so I went to grab some from the Bronzors and Bronzongs. Then while heading off, I found a wild aggressive Exeggutor, which I fought and caught. I collected items, and Natu evolved into Zatu after some training. During the night, a ghost encountered me, and it turned out to be a Gengar, which was crazy. After some battling, I captured it. I'd grabbed some eggs to hatch for the living decks. I got two Charmanders and a Bulbasaur. Did some training, and the Bulbasaur evolved into Ivasaur for the decks. I spent day 249 training in the grass to level up some mons for the decks, and later that night I found another Gengar. I caught the Gengar. Now at the halfway point, I was making some great progress towards my goal. My living decks was filling up nicely with the storage boxes, and the farming farm was giving me plenty of life force each day for my future shiny hunt for Spiritomb. If you guys are enjoying so far, make sure you hit that subscribe button. I spent the day grabbing items from all of the Pokemon. I rode around on Rapidash and picked up Doduo and Totodile. I started to train in some nearby grass and caught a cute fly. Pidgey and Azuril before starting a battle with an aggressive Lionoon. After some time, I caught the Lionoon. An aggressive Sand Slash had showed up, so I encountered and caught it. Cutie Fly evolved into Rabombe, and while travelling back, I caught a Karakarok. The Pokemon I had caught ended up spawning in my house because I forgot to sleep in the capturing pen, so that was a nice surprise. I grabbed them and put them into the storage box. I reset my safe place by sleeping in the capturing pen. Found a wild Execute and Crabbit and caught them both before running into one of the level 50 Garchomp parents from ages ago. And after an intense battle and it almost wiping out my entire team, I managed to capture it by putting it to sleep with the brand new Execute. It had been a couple of days so I grabbed all the items waiting for me at the farming farm, went into the grass below and caught a slowpoke, and during the night I identified a ghost as a Sableye and managed to capture that as well. I put Sableye into the farm and grabbed some eggs to hatch for the decks, and at the end of the day one of the eggs hatched into a Rattata. The next egg to hatch was a Growlithe egg. I then crafted a ton more Pokeballs seeing as how I was using lots to fill up the decks. I spent the start of the day going through the storage box and fully updating my spreadsheet for my living decks. I grabbed some items and went hunting at the back of the house, and found an Ekans and ended the day by encountering a Poliwhirl. I fought and caught the Poliwhirl and also captured a Paris, Ralts, and a Pidgey to later evolve. And then finally, after 59 days into this 100 days... Oh! Oh, Shiny Maku here! Yo! 
Oh, that's sick. That's like the first one I found. I'm on day 259. <laughs> that's a sick one to find. Finally. <laughs> Something. Oh my god. So yeah, finally, another shiny Pokemon for the collection. A shiny Makuhita. Awesome. I started the day by finding a Murkrow, and after a long and tiring battle, it finally captured. I found another flying type, which was a Trumbeak, which looks awesome in this game, and I caught this as well. After the battle, the Charmanders that I've been training up both evolved into Charmeleon. Perfect, now I had a Charmeleon for the decks, and I had one that was on its way to becoming a Charizard. I remembered I found a Duskstone not too long ago, so I gave it to Murkrow, and it evolved into Honchkrow, which looks amazing in this game. I found a higher level Trumbeak, which could easily be evolved, so I caught that as well. I I also caught Croconaw, Wooper, Shelder, and a Lullan Exeggutor. Then Shiny Makuhita evolved, and well, that's interesting. Does that like? I guess it's kind of purple. It's supposed to be like really purple. I got my Hariyama Grande. So I had my Shiny Hariyama Grande. I wasn't the biggest fan of how it looks in this game, but it is what it is. To end the night, I caught a Psyduck. At the start of the day, Pidgey evolved into Pidgeotto. I placed Shiny Hariyama into the Shiny Pen and started to store all the Pokemon from the Capture Pen into the Living Decks, checking them off as I did. Then I found an aggressive Lombre who looked pretty funny. I thought the Lombre had a mustache. <laughs> After a very long battle, I finally caught it. I went home to heal in my comfy bed, traveled outside to find an Alolan Raichu and Octillery and caught both of them. Then identified a ghost in the middle of the night as a Litwick. I caught the Litwick, had my leg caught by a trap inch in the desert, which I fought and caught, crafted the old rod, and then saw for a good rod, I needed two metal cores. So I traveled to the Bronzors to pick some metal cores up. On the way back, I collected a friendly Kangaskhan, got back and crafted both a good and super rod and tried fishing for the first time. I found a core fish and captured it and spent the night fighting a Poliwag. I caught the Poliwag and then used a super rod for the first time and fished up a wild Gyarados. After some battling, I captured it. I also found a Feebas and a Guldeen and Stored them all away at the end of the day. At the start of the day, I encountered a wild curlier and caught it with one ball. I then grabbed Drowsy to headbutt a cactus to capture a Maractus. Then moving on, I ran into a level 50 Swellow, and after a lot of battling, I finally caught it. Moving on from the Swellow fight, I found a wild level 60 Agron. Holy crap, the high level mons were everywhere today. I somehow managed to capture it, it reminded me of a Machamp that I saw in the snow biome, so I went to go capture that as well. After battling so many high level mons, I hurried back home to heal. After healing, I tried heading out again to go on a long journey to capture a bunch of Pokemon, but I ran into another high level Pokemon which I needed, a Pidgeot. After it almost wiping my entire team, I got it low enough to capture, I now needed to head back home to heal again. On the way back, I found a friendly tentacle who was stuck in the desert of all places, so I rescued him and brought him home. The crazy mons were not finished yet. Today, I found a Camerupt and a Poliwrath both in the desert. I battled and caught both of them. It was great that I was finding so many high leveled and rare Pokemon for the living decks, not too far from home as well. I set off once again and found a Wild Weasel. After capturing it, I flew across the forest on Volcarona before finding a wild Quagsire later that night. I got the Quagsire, went back home to heal and found a wild Staryu and caught that too. I found a beach area and encountered a Marrow to capture it. I also found an Azumarill, which was captured after only one ball. I got a Lotad and finished the day by encountering a Mantine. We may as well call Day 274 National Mantine Day because it took all friggin day to capture this Pokemon. I flew across more of the island and spotted a wild Floatzel, but unfortunately I ended up one shot in it with Ampharos. I moved on and found a beach with a super low level Hoppip and grabbed it, and then ended the night by fighting a Rhydon. After some battling, the Rhydon was mine. I healed up my team with some Moo Moo Milk and carried on to find a wild Vile Plume, which by the end of the night I ended up capturing. I searched the snow biome and after some bad luck battles against the Jinx and the Pillar Swine, where I accidentally fainted the Jinx and the Pillar Swine took itself out, I managed to capture a different Jinx towards the end of the night. I started the day by capturing an Aeron. I moved on from the snow biome to find a wild Noctowl, which I also grabbed. I went home to sleep and heal, store away all the Pokemon from the last few days of traveling, and spent the night checking the eggs on the farm with Crookedile. It took a couple of days to check all the eggs, and after I was finished, I noticed that some of the pens didn't have any Dittles with them. So I finally headed back to the giant building to capture some more Dittles for the breeding farm. I managed to find and capture a couple of Dittles over the next two days. Then something crazy happened which I was not expecting at all. <gasps> oh my god! Your shiny ditto? What? I'm just grinding regular ditto. <laughs> Out of everything, I was hoping I'd get a blue ditto. Yo, that's sick. Right, I have to be really careful. Oh my god, I'm not prepared for this. Because none of my Pokemon have any status moves. I don't have sleep powder or anything. And the only move it knows is struggle. Oh my god. 
<laughs> it only knows struggle. I can't believe I didn't bring anything else. I caught the other two. Come on. Don't do not do this to me, Shiny Ditto. Oh my god, there we go. Yes. Oh, Shiny Blue Ditto. That's sick, dude. I, I don't know if it would, but I wonder if that breeds Shinies faster. So I had found a shiny ditto, which is crazy. It's such a nice blue color, and now I could use a fancy shiny ditto to breed as well. Right after capturing the shiny ditto, I also found another ditto and captured this one as well. I went back home and placed shiny ditto in the capturing pen for now. I placed the other dittos in with some Pokemon from the breeding pens. Now, I wasn't sure if this was a thing, but I wanted to put a Pokemon with the shiny ditto on the off chance breeding with a shiny ditto is a better shiny chance. It probably isn't, but it felt like an old school ground rumor, so to test it, I grabbed my favorite Pokemon, Maractus, and placed it in the pen. However, Maractus was unhappy, so I tried everything to make it happy by putting as much stuff into the pen as possible, like flowers and trees, and then I found out it likes long grass. And that was when I discovered that miracle seeds can be used to grow my own grass, which can also be used to encounter wild Pokemon, so that was pretty cool. After discovering that miracle seeds had an overworld effect, I checked the rest of my items, and also found out that manure can also be used to fertilize saplings and small trees. After checking this, my first Maractus egg was ready. I checked it, but it wasn't shiny. I went to the farming farm to grab all the items that my Pokemon were holding. I noticed that Charmeleon was only two levels away from evolving, so I took it to train in the new grass that I had grown in the capturing pen. After a little bit of training, I finally had a Charizard for the living decks. I then traveled across the desert to a nearby forest. I started the day by capturing a Caterpie, and while training, I also caught a skip loom. At the end of the day, I caught one Pikachu and started a battle with a second one. I caught the Pikachu, and that day, I managed to also get a Kakuna, another Pikachu, and a Taylor before heading home to heal. My Maractus had laid a couple more eggs, so I checked them both before checking the rest of the egg farm. With only 10 days left before the Spiritomb hunt, it was time to start getting my team ready, so I wanted to get all the egg checks out of the way, which took about two days. I wanted to make sure I was fully prepared for the Spiritomb fight. With it taking 107 life force to even encounter it, it must be a crazy Pokemon to fight. So I checked through my entire storage box for any Pokemon that had furry moves or any helpful moves like Stun Spot or Hypnosis. I chose to bring Rebombe from earlier on, which had Struggle Bug, Draining Kiss, and Stun Spot, all super helpful. Next, I grabbed Execute, which had both Stun Spot and Sleep Powder just in case. Finally, I came across the male Curlier that I caught, which had Hypnosis, Draining Kiss, and Psychic. I would also want to evolve it before bringing it with me, so now I needed to find two stones. I needed a Dawn Stone for Curlier and a Leaf Stone for Execute. The team was looking good. I would also bring Crocodile as my level 70 tank, Rapidash so I could easily do runaways for the encounters, and my Shiny Magma with Smoke Screen to drop its accuracy. I started the day by training up Ribombe, grabbed all the items from the farm including Moo Moo Milk, which I might need to heal in the battle, and then I went off to find the two stones needed to evolve my team. After a lot of traveling, I finally found a deep forest, which had items buried in the ground, and by using Dig with Crocodile, I found a Dawnstone, and used it right away to evolve Curlia into Gallade. Then, not too far away under a Meganium nest, I found the Leaf Stone I was looking for. I used the Leaf Stone right away and evolved Execute into Executor. Then I stayed in the forest to train up my brand new Pokemon for a couple of days. After training, I headed home to fully heal, checked the Maractus eggs, and grabbed more items from the farm. I spent the day grabbing items and training in the grass at the back of the house. I spent day 299 training, crafting Pokeballs, grabbing items, and grabbing the rest of my team before heading off to find the graveyard to finally hunt Shiny Spiritomb. I had finally reached the graveyard and stood right in front of the Spiritomb. Everything from the last 100 days had led to this. I gave the Spiritomb the life force and it came to life right in front of me. Now, the hunt begins. Was it going to be level 50, 60, 70? Let's find out. I was only level 25. I did all that training. <laughs> it's level 25, are you kidding me? So it's level 25, but it might be a hard Pokemon to capture and I was 100% ready. I started my encounters and not too long afterwards. <gasps> yes, shiny spirit too. Oh my God. Right, put down the sweets. And do this. It's gonna do, but I'm just gonna use smoke screen against it, and so it's got no more accuracy. It's got nasty plot. I could do a paralyze in it. Okay, it's paralyzed, and it can't hit barely any moves. Oh my god, it took one Pokeball. <laughs> what? 
I thought that was going to take so long to do. There's no way, dude. Now, after 300 days in Poker Wilds, I had done a lot in this game. The living decks I'd started, I decided to put on a hold because a future update of this game will be bringing the Poker decks. And I would rather wait in case I can get rewarded for capturing everything. I checked out how beacons work in the game, and man, I should have set these up ages ago. Beacons allow you to teleport anywhere on the current map wherever the beacon is placed. All you have to do is use a Pokemon with the field move teleport and find your beacon on the map, and you can even name them. So, in case I return in the future I set up a bunch of beacons at the most important places on the map and at certain biomes for fast traveling purposes. Now I had some goals to finish up but before I do for one last time I had to clean up the egg farm and did I find a shiny? No. No I didn't but I'm still holding out hope that Maraxxus does have a shiny baby at some point. Now 315 days into the game it was time for some of my toughest challenges yet. Shiny hunting the remaining legendary Pokemon. So I grabbed my team, healed them up, made some extra spell tags and flew to the Reggie cave to start my first shiny legendary hunt, Reggie Lecky. Now Reggie Lecky was wicked fast, meaning not even my high level Rapidash could run from the battle every time. So instead, I put Crocodile up front and had him faint the Reggie each time, until... Yes! Let's go! Shiny Reggie Lecky, you know, I've actually never seen this shiny before. I never hunted it back in Sword and Shield. This is my first time seeing it. Let's do this. Ooh. It's like a slinky. Reggie Lecky had some cool moves. I brought out Magma to smoke screen hit, but only managed to get a couple off. It had a move called Thunder Cage that would do damage and then even more damage over time. It had Shock Wave, which knocked out Magma. I brought out Volcarona and used Leech Life to get it as low as possible. Then I brought out Exeggutor to use Sleep Powder. Then I threw as many fastballs as I could, as they have a higher chance to capture super fast mons. And then after some time, Let's go! Shiny Reggie Lecky, dude. Oh, that was one of the harder battles. Reggie Lecky is insane. Such a sad sight, my child. Your electricity restrained, but you are so still so strong. I desire more. So the Reggies is kids. Is Reggie thick ass actually Reggie dad? After capturing the Reggie Lecky, it was transported outside. And I couldn't just let a wild shiny Reggie Lecky just roam around in the overworld. So I dropped off Reggie Rock at the beach base and picked it up before healing and going back into the cave to face the final Reggie, Reggie Drago. After a few days of running away, Sick, dude. Oh my god. I wasn't sure what this one was gonna look like either. It's so bright. Oh my god. Alright, let's do this. So, I did my usual strats. I brought out Shiny Magma to use Smoke Screen to lower its accuracy. I did some damage to it and then brought out Exeggutor to paralyze it. And then I threw balls like my life depended on it until. Let's go! Reggie Drago. Oh my god, the last one that we needed. That's so sick. Such a sad sight, my child. It's my fault. Incomplete. Just a dragon's head, but you are still so strong. My work is complete. Reggie Giga stayed in place after the fight, so before I checked it out, I went outside to see a really cool thing. Oh my god! When it walks around, it's just a huge dragon head? Yo, that's sick, dude. Oh, that's so cool. Right, um... After dropping off Reggie Lecky and picking up Reggie Drago, I went back into the cave and spoke to Reggie Thickass. Oh my god. Oh my god. We can... Okay. Oh my god, dude, this is sick. What level is he gonna be? The Battlefield Quakes? Under Reggie Gigas's presence. Oh my god! Level 70! Whoo! What is going on? Oh my god. Alright, this is wild. So it's very similar to the Mewtwo fight where it's gonna have animations and stuff. So wait. Right. I saved. I can run. And is he just there? Oh my god. We can shiny hunt it. We're doing it. So, the final shiny hunt for the King of All Reggies begun, and just after a few days of hunting...
Oh! Yes, dude! Oh my god, it looks so sick. It looks so good. Oh, that one took a while. Right. This. This is gonna be a difficult one. But man, it looks so good. Right. I got away with two crunches when I tested it at first. I'm just so scared of getting a crit. So maybe I go for the bite, which is a little bit weaker. Perfect. Actually perfect. Right. Now we go into Exeggutor and we paralyze it. The ground is shaking violently. That does damage to me? Oh my god. Alright, it's a good thing I've got some Moo Moo Milk. I didn't know that was a thing. Please survive, Exeggutor. Uh, no. Oh my god, it one shot. No, 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 no. Oh my god, it one shot. I have no way to stop it from doing attacks, and I have nothing to, like, put it to sleep or anything. All I can do, heal and hope that I manage to capture it. I've got it in red HP, which is good. Okay, I did. I just, I didn't expect it to wipe them out in one shot at least. Stomp does so much damage. God, I needed those smoke streams from Magma for it to miss. Oh, this is rough. This is actually rough. Oh man, I sh I, I need way more Mimi milk for this. Heavy ball. Oh my god, one ball, let's go! Oh my god! Oh, thank god it's easier to capture. I, I don't know if I just got super lucky. Oh, that... That was awful. <laughs> Alright, it was sent to the last safe place. One ball. I still can't believe it only took one ball to capture. But we did it. We got every single shiny Reggie in this game. But it's not over yet. Now that the Reggie cave was fully hunted and finished, it was time for our last shiny hunt in Pokey Wilds. If you remember from the first 100 days, I discovered Mewtwo in the giant building. So of course, it was time to return. After navigating my way back through and finding a couple more Ultra Balls, I finally made it back into Mewtwo's lure to start the final shiny hunt. Then, eventually... Wait, is this it? That shadow looks different. Oh my god! Oh my god, it is! Dude! It's finally here! Oh my god! <laughs> oh my god, that's how long I've been doing this for. I noticed the shadow is different. <laughs> right, oh my god. That looks sick, dude. Look at the armor. Oh man, right. Let's bring out... Let's start with Magma this time. Just to do the smart screens. Dude, it looks so sick. I, I love this battle. I love this battle so much. Just the music and the animations. Oh, dude. This is why we need an updated 2D game on the Switch. It'd be so good. I managed to find two Ultra Balls. Oh, it, it disabled smoke screen out of everything. Oh, God. What is happening? Okay, so that's similar to Reggie Gigas hitting the floor at us. I need to try and keep Magmar alive so we can get plenty of smoke screens off this time. Oh my god, this is crazy. That was one psychic. That was one psychic. Okay, is it still... Still disabled? What if I confuse Ray it? Yo, this is sick. Look at that animation. Oh my god. That's so good. Okay, fire punch. Please don't do a lot. Please don't burn it. Oh my god, please don't burn it. I can't remember if fire punch even burns, but I would hate that. Okay, so you psychic. I don't know how many turns it takes for the psychic energy. Maybe like every three. I thought that did so much damage, dude. But psychic is ridiculous. The good thing is I can bring out Crocodile soon. But I just need to get, I want to get enough smoke screens off. And then I want to paralyze it and then we're good to go. Yeah, right. <laughs> one smoke screen it is. This is, alright, if it one shots Exeggutor, it is what it is. But hopefully. Swift. Come on, hit the stun spar. Hit the stun spar. No. Oh my god, it's got recover. 
Okay, stun spawn's been hit. That's good. That's good. It can't get burnt now. So. How much does Ember do? Oh, that was a crit. That was scary. It might not be too bad if it uses Recover again because I'd have a, another chance to get it into red HP. Alright. Does this put me on 60? Yeah. So that does 30 each time. And we've got 18 Mimi Milks left. This is going to hurt. Yep. Oh my god, it was crit. It just one shots with a crit. I don't know if Crocodile will actually get hit by the psychic effects. So let's find out. I'm guessing because it's like a field effect, he will. Oh no, he doesn't. Oh, that's so good. Crocodile can't get affected. I think the only thing it can hit me with is Swift. It had Psychic Recover, Swift, and I forget what its other move was. Disable. Yeah. So it can only hit me with Swift. That's the only thing that can do damage to Crocodile now. Okay, that didn't do too much. Oh my god, it's going to hit itself, isn't it? Oh, thank god. Okay, Disable. It's going to Disable. Yeah, I'm just getting zero shakes with yellow HP. I really don't want to... Okay, well, it's just use Recover, so I can use Leech Life now. This fight was insane. First, the background. Every three turns, the Psychic Field would do 30 damage to your Pokemon. On top of that, Mewtwo was insanely strong, being able to one-shot some of my Pokemon. And then to top it all off, it had Recover. So any type of damage that I was able to do to it was instantly recovered. I did what I could, paralyzed it, and got it down to red health multiple times. Luckily for me, Crocodile, my highest and best Pokemon, was immune to most of his attacks, and also the psychic field damage. After 40 minutes of being stuck in this battle, I just allowed Mewtwo to heal up to full HP, and started to throw balls and just hope that I wouldn't have to do this all over again. This was the hardest battle and challenge that I'd come across, and if I hadn't discovered healing like Moo Moo Milk, and having my Pokemon so high of a level, I don't think it would have been possible. But of course, after some time... Let's go! Oh my god, I thought I was going to be in that battle forever. Oh my god. Sent to the last safe place. Oh god, I don't even know what that was. Here it is. Oh my god, as if it's in the house out of everywhere. That's so cool. So yeah, it looks like once you capture it, the armor comes off. Shiny freaking music. That was definitely the hardest battle of the entire game. And I'm glad it was. I'm glad we left it for last. I thought the Reggie Gigas was going to end up being harder. Look at that. We get to just ride around on Mewtwo's back. Shiny Mewtwo. All the Reggies. Volcarona. All shiny hunted and all captured. Pokewilds were so much fun. And I thank each and every person that checked out this series. Be sure to subscribe to the channel for future content. And if Pokewilds ever get some big updates, we will for sure return. But for now, it's finished. Until next time, stay proper good.